And so I go gaily with my son, and that brings enough questions as it is. At Starbucks, the day he was four months old, I strolled in with him riding in his soft carrier, again, snug on my chest, smiling away at everyone like a half-pint-sized Miss America. We got me an iced coffee and him several lavish compliments from the counter staff who are among his many, many members of his worldwide fan club. On the way out, a woman of roughly my age stopped to tickle the bottoms of his feet while saying, oh, you look so cute together. I could never get my husband to wear either of our children in one of those things. How does your wife get you to do it? Well, I replied, I have a husband, so I imagine that changes the game a little. (laughs) Sagely, she nodded and then said, in the tone of voice that people use when they really want you to know that what they're saying proves that they understand, (laughs) she said, oh, You're the woman gay. (laughs) Across the screen in my brain flashed the first five points of my argument. I am grown since I'm 16, but not that much changed. I wanted to tell her, Miss Clueless Suburbia 2010, that that was not at all how it worked, that queers were not required in any way to abide by some imitation heterosexual gender role division, and furthermore, that as a feminist myself, I was disturbed indeed by her intimation that caring for a child was women's work, and that perhaps that was why her husband didn't want to wear their children in carriers out in public if she felt like that about it, hey? And while we were at it, just a general note, that although Starbucks was full of mothers out with their children, even though society doesn't value the work of child raising when it's done by women because we just think it's their job, all those moms out with their kids were also very cute and fabulous, and where was the love for them, I'd like to know. This is the good thing about being a professional educator, right? The talking points are always ready to go. I open my mouth to make her really regret her choice of words and worldviews. And then Stanley spit up in my ear. (laughs) It doesn't really work that way. I said, simply accepting the napkin that she handed me and shifting the kid into the other arm so I could cram the napkin as deep into my ear as I could, both for maximum spit-up absorption and to drown out the howling of the 16-year-old I could hear, outraged from 20 years ago. We worked hard to make sure we both got a lot of time with him. My husband, she interrupted me, well, whatever. She said, sort of dismissively, I could have pressed on, but it turns out that at a certain point, getting a warm response about being a gay dad out with your kid is kind of, well, you know, sometimes enough for one day. Sometimes when this happens, I feel a pang of regret for not taking more time to educate, for not really making use of the opportunity. I wish I had more time and energy to do it. I certainly have plenty of chances, many of which are not, scuppered by spit up in my ear. I resolved in that moment that I would do better next time, that I would explain more, that I would make more space in the world for all kinds of families, all kinds of parents. She gave Stanley one more wide grin and getting an equally exuberant one in return said, he's incredibly cute. And that smile, he looks just like you. Next, next time. I meant when I don't have spit up still.